Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Overlay, a poker podcast brought to you by CCG Poker and Paramount Social Club. Both of those places are in different geographic areas. Yes. That have Beautiful different, Houston, Texas. different benefits of sun. You know, Houston's like an awesome place to go in the winter. If I was a Chicago poker player, which I guess I am, I would go to Houston. <laughs> I would make a Houston trip. Houston's in probably February. Like when, oh yeah, when yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably zero percent chance I want to go in the summer because like I'm supposed to go down there in June and I'm like not signing up to go because I'm like it's going to be so warm and I don't want to deal with the heat. And it like, just seems so hot. It's so warm. Like it's just I, hot. It's like Flo- I mean, it's hot in Chicago. I couldn't imagine it. Texas. It's like Florida hot. Anyways, I went to Florida a few weeks ago. Hey everybody, ninety ninety nine. Degrees. Oof, 99 degrees. At the beginning of May. I mean, what are we doing? Yeah, that's rough. That's warm. That's hot. I'm not a hot person. I like 70. 70 I can deal with. Basically, I want to move to San Diego weather, but I, I don't, about to say but San I don't, Diego. Like, but I don't want to move to California. So, yeah. Anyways, no politics. So, if today. anybody knows where you can get um, San Diego weather, but not, but not in San Diego. Let us know. Yeah, yeah. please, please text Four into heads. the uh, to the hotline one eight hundred overlay. Uh, I do <laughs> want to do a nice shout out. I did do some shameless marketing this past week on Twitter. Okay. From our overlay Twitter handle, which does get neglected a little bit. I'm I'm mildly embarrassed by. We're the, on the back. We're on the back. Burner. We are like, it's hard to do. Anyways. Uh, but I did notice that there was a huge, 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 it's going to be huge, a huge overlay in Texas, believe it or not, at a club called The Lodge, which uh, has always been one of the largest clubs, if not the largest club, poker club in the state of Texas, which is saying something because they're known for large spaces. But um, not only were they famous beforehand about being like, they're like a 60 table card room. Like it's it's wild. It's huge. It's like a Walmart-sized venue. Uh, But on top of that, they have recently been purchased, invested into, whatever the case may be, purchased by Doug Polk, Andrew Nimi, and Mr. Brad Owens. So, like, if you're going to get pick three social media influencers in the world of poker, like, those are the three guys you're going to pick. So, they have a massive draw. Like, the games have been wild. They've been doing all these live streams in Texas. They just did something called, like, the Lodge series or something, and they did it in May, but I think they missed the guarantee by like 250K. They were half a million dollars upside down with like seven hours left to go, and Brad Owens like sent out a tweet, a Twitter tin, a tweet Twitter-ton. that was like, well, once we get like a thousand extra players in the next, <laughs> the next four hours, there's going to be a huge overlay. And I was like, hey, the overlay sounds like a great podcast. It's great. I, I, I slid in those DMs and tried to get us some some free listens. So if you're picking this up from my twit uh, um, up from the lodge, thanks for listening. My name's Ken. That's uh, Brandon on the other side of this line. Hey, Brando. What up? What up? Uh, today, uh, oh, wait, last last overlay story from Texas. So huge overlay, like several hundred. Hun- overlay to the point where they need to damage control and take to Twitter and say, get here. There's a lot of free money. Which I always felt was weird. Like uh, the GM at Paramount Mark always is like, oh, we're like, because our, our overlays are never that big. It's like, man, the the stack tournaments, you know, 10K guarantee. And we're at like 8,500, you know, blast out on social media. And I was like, hold on. Like, I'm not going to do that. Like people, I feel like will get more into it that you're just going to put in the money and you're not going to complain about it and try to get extra people to come in. And like, how many extra people are really going to come in? And you're like sending out these like tweets, Brad Owen, Nimi and Doug Polk did it the right way. They kind of made it a joke. They're like, Hey, we're giving away $250,000. And then in parentheses underneath, it was like, not on purpose, <laughs> Right. <laughs> which I thought accidentally, was accidentally, of course, accidentally. But, uh, like I thought that was really, they did a really good job of like, well, that yeah, kind of sucked. Poking fun, poking at fun at the fact that they're dumping. Of just like, yeah, yeah, you know what? And that's the purpose of a guarantee. Um, you know, right? It's the poker players want an overlay, which is why we have a podcast. And the poker rooms are hoping that that big guarantee will draw in players. And it's a marketing pip. And that that's all it is. Um, 
on a side note, I don't know if he won or not, but Doug Polk was definitely heads up for the championship. And I was thinking he needs first place to break even on this tournament. To break even. <laughs> so he, he not only did it was there a huge overlay, and then Doug Polk uh, either won the tournament or got second place. I kind of missed towards the end there, but pretty awesome. The owners of the poker companies sometimes rely on the horses to save them from the tournament that didn't make the money they thought they would. 100%. All right. Today's episode, we're going to talk about... We're going to repeat an old episode because some cool shit's happened since then. Episode six, one of the OG wow. top 10 originals. This is two years ago. It's hard to believe that the, the podcast is like two years old now. Um, run good Seems stories. Like it yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't, though. It was two years ago. A little bit yeah, more. It's a long time. It was April of 2020. April 15th, tax day. It's kind of funny. Wow. Um, I, wonder what, I wonder what we paid for a gallon of gas on that day. No, oh boy, Brando. We've just gone <laughs> crazy now. <laughs> Oh, well. Run good stories. So I was like, Brando, we've been doing a lot of like strategy stuff and talking about free rolls and marketing. I'm like, we need to do just a straight up good old time. Let's talk about something something sweet. So I want to hear a Brando run good story. And to be truthful, you've been kind of struggling with your run good story for like the last two weeks, right? We've been kind of putting this off because you've been... Yeah, yeah. We were like, I can't think of anything. good two weeks ago yeah. and you were like hey brando you think of any run good stories yet i'm like no nah, i really yeah no and because you know you got your run good story all cemented Which, in we'll, place ready to go and we'll get to that at the end of the episode so you're gonna have to listen to the whole episode to figure out what ken's and run good story you, is ken's better than mine so stay tuned yep but we're gonna we're gonna lead with mine because you know finally over the last 48 hours mm-hmm. the kind of spoke into existence yep. a run good story you you willed you just you I put did. it out there you willed it to happen you go ahead me Lay it on me. i want to hear it because uh, i don't well. i don't know it like you didn't uh you're like oh i finally i i know the dollar amount and then i was like "Ooh, it sounds like a run good story you're like it is let's do this so tuesday which would be two days ago now I decided I was going to mosey on over to the shoe and I hadn't been there since like rivers opened and didn't know what to expect. And let me tell you, they are hurting a little bit. I was going to ask like overall players. I mean, they only got like seven tables running at the peak and like three of those tables are PLO tables. Oh, wow. So the PLO game has kind of taken over like the last two days. I've been there twice overnight and like, um, at like three in the morning, there was like one, one, two game and then two, one, two PLO games. Really? So, yeah. That's yeah. kind of crazy. It is. It was not like the shoe I remember back in the day, but anyways, the PLO game was good. And I brought my handy dandy partner, Sal to uh play some hands with me. And, you know, I was, I was in for $700 on Tuesday and I kind of just nickel Playing and one two. Is it one, one two? two PLO? Okay, one two PLO, five hundred max. And I just kind of slowly but surely, don't even remember winning a huge pot. A uh, guy dumped me like a thousand with a pair, and I had a set. It was great. Next thing I know, I had like thirty nine hundred in front of me, and it was like four in the morning. I'm like, okay, I think I'll go home. And no, no really fun hands. Are just a constant accumulation of. 100 200 300 400 at a time and managed to get 700 up to like 3800 wow so i go to the cage i cash out night's over i got 78 extra dollars take that 78 extra dollars to the roulette table pull 22 out of my pocket to make it even 100 nice my two numbers are 13 and 14 so i was going to do 50 dollars on 13 50 dollars on 14 just a little gamble and then Sal, an end of the night always, gamble is one of my favorite things is. to do. I love it with like your spare change right. from like your poker session. Well, it's like the it's the cast offs, right? Because you said it was what like yep. thirty two seventy eight or whatever yeah, it was thirty eight seventy eight thirty eight seventy eight. So I mean, like that's great. Cash out thirty eight. Did you tip the cage at least? You got to tip the cage. I did tip the cage. Okay, so this is after tipping the cage. You still had the seventy eight. Got it. I love it. Keep going. Um. And Sal always uh, puts his $20 on the number 24. And then, funny backstory, um, a poker dealer who was also dealing me roulette like a few months ago, her birthday was 27. I was getting, I was playing her birthday for $50 to $100 every single, this was months ago. And um, 
I forget to play it, and it hit, and she was so excited, and then she looked over, and it was oh, red no. Oh, and my me. God. And she's like, you played, it for, you played it for four hours, and then my birthday came up, and I didn't. So blah, blah, blah. So then I saw her uh, on Tuesday night, and she's like, she's like, never forget my birthday. Never forget my birthday. So I had no. four green chips. So I went 25 on 13. 25 on 14, 25 on 24, because that's what Sal's playing. Nice. And I had one more green chip. I'm like, I'm going to put it on her birthday, 27. Spin, 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 spin. Hits 27. No. Yeah, for 875 bucks. That's sick. I know. So I was like, wow. Just randomly, like, the spare green one that I would never have put 27, but I ran into her and talked about it. So I put it, and it hits. And uh, so then I take my winnings, and I take the $150 in air quoting extra spare uh money from roulette put it in a slot machine hit a bonus run it up to a thousand on the way out come on and one another win another 850 in slots just on a side note for you to take your 700 not even win one massive all in or something and just grind up like a 4k stack basically i know i'm rounding up that's what you do in yeah. run good stories because we talked about yep. that in the first episode of run good Absolutely. stories Absolutely, episode six that. please re-listen to that but like you always round up the winners and then you take it off and then you're like, all right, cool. I'm just going to pay this like random hundred bucks on roulette, bink a roulette. Then you take that money, go to slot machines and drill it up into a thousand dollar, you know, jackpot winner. And then I'm supposed to, then you already said my story's better. So I really hope I deliver on this story, but that's, so, that's sick. So that is, uh, you know, part one. That's, oh, that's, come on. Um, there's a part one that there's a part two. The part two is actually a little more exciting. Um, so that was Tuesday. I wander on back the next day on Wednesday, get into the game. I do get into the game for like 2100 this time. The game was good. I was up. I was down. I was in for 1500 and had 3000 And then I punted it all off, got stacked, had to reload, ended up being in for $2,100. And it was like 3 a.m. And I was just, I was just happy to like, try and get back to even the game wasn't even that great you know it's kind of the middle of the night now and i'm just in hopefully break even mode and then in about 40 minutes i go from my 1100 stack in for 2100 to like 7k whoa in about an hour and then again, one big hand or just like a couple like nice. I mean, obviously uh, they're all I big did, hands, I but did like have a big a big hand where like I an all in middle, multi way pot kind of thing. Middle set, and then you know Sal put in a thousand dollars with aces, nice. and then the lady Jump. put in like two thousand dollars with an open under, and my set of six is just how. And they don't they don't let you run it twice at the horseshoe. No, nope, just run it once. Yeah, they don't even ask; they just rip it. At which. It's funny, in the old days, I said the old days, five or ten years ago, when people were talking about, like, when that was a thing, when people would notice it on, like, Poker After Dark, and we're watching them, like, you want to run it twice, and they'd argue about it for, like, I mean, it made for good television, but it was mildly yeah, it annoying. Yeah, it made for good, good TV. It makes for good TV. Um, and people are always like, oh, the 1-1 one, one game, can we run it twice? I'm like, no. <laughs> the reason for that to happen is Come that on, the guys. game doesn't break, but... Right. You know, anyways, I, I always find now that it's such a common a common place now to to discuss twice and then the horseshoe doesn't even consider it. Nope. Seems like a bad idea, but I'm not here to poo poo the horseshoe. Keep going. I mean it would be nice to just not have people winning eight thousand dollar pots and potentially chopping it. Well um, and then it was funny, you talked about the victory lap and then the eight thousand dollar winner and the, the person gets up and does like a couple of victory laps around, takes like yep. a half hour dinner break, comes back, plays one hand and then leaves. And they're really just punting the hand, they're just gonna fold anyways, be like correct. All right guys, that's it for me. It's like they feel better about the um hit and run it's that way. Lap. Yeah. yeah, they feel better if they didn't run if they do a victory lap, even though they only played one additional hand since they won the big pot. So besides that, feels better besides when they take the a dodging lap. with the middle set, uh, that was, how much was that pot? Was I mean <laughs> that was like a six k pot? Okay, wow. so that was that was a big one, and I'm not exaggerating you. I had at my peak fifty eight hundred in red. Whoa! I did just do a chip a chip stacking poll on um on social media for ccg and i was like it's it, people were crazy but people had some really good responses like some people were like i stacked them on top of each other and i was like touche that's good, really good good 
good comment there, bud. But um, I don't know if you know what to do with 5,800 in red, but I have yeah, no what idea did you what to do. do How I did you made, stack them? I made 200 stacks. Which kind of stack kind of tilts 200. me, to be honest. Go ahead. And then, But I had so many, I was able to do a diamond of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, which is 15, 200 stacks. So the bottom layer was just 3,000 in red. And then on top of the five four three two one diamond, I was able to do another two hundred stack of four three two one. Oh my god! And then god. another two hundred stack of three two one, and then another two hundred stack of two one. So at the highest, they were stacked forty eighty one twenty one hundred and sixty chips high, and then I had the black on top. That's so like the crazy. black chips were actually above my head on the table like when i was sitting there i had to reach like higher than eye level to reach all my black chips that is mildly aggravating i would be so so mad like the entire room was just like what is this guy building like it is just i mean six thousand in red and then i had a bunch of black and then i just kind of kept on going and was just taking down pots and you know everyone just sitting there shaking their head and i was just showing up with the nuts and Every time I had to set the board pair and I was able to bet 400 on the river, and everyone just thought I was bluffing because I had a gazillion chips. And then they would call and I'd be like, uh, not full house. And then I'd have a wrap and there'd be a guy on it for 300. And they'd be like, certainly he doesn't have anything again. And then the wrap would just get there. So anyways, I ended up fast forward to 6 a.m. cashing out 95.80. Holy shit. One, two game. And you were in for and- how much? 2100 wow so 7400 and that was ba- that was that was just the n- the next night after the, that was the next night run up after like the five roulette winner slot machine fiasco yep, yep. 3200 in plo and then 800 in slots 800 in roulette that's so pretty crazy yeah so 4800 on the first night I feel seventy four hundred. I feel like night. if you'd have told me this story, I might have let you go second because that's like your streak was a little bit longer. My streak yeah. was much shorter, but it was powerful. But yours was just so much more impactful. So, anyway, yeah. so basically two days, thirteen thousand. That's great. Ran like God. I mean, yeah. And it was just funny because I, I literally was struggling to come up with a wrong good story, and just decided just to you know, create you got- your own. I want to I want to have a great WSOP story because our most popular episodes and the most popular time we've ever been on Twitter was the Brandon takeover during the WSOP when you made it through day three. Did you make it to day yeah. four? Yeah, yeah, into day four. But like you busted pretty early into day four, right? Yeah, I busted like four hours into day four. That's that's like a quarter of the day. That's pretty good. That's not that's it not is. terrible. Um, yeah, but that was awesome, and I want to put out into the universe, the poker universe, that we're going to have a phenomenal team CCG. We're all you, me, and and whomever makes it from this CCG free roll. We're all going to be on Team CCG Twitter, and I'm like super stoked that I hope all three of us make it to the final table. And can you imagine what great television that would be? Oh, uh, that'd be great. That would be you great. know, it does work out well when it's not Pretty just right, sure Team CCG. Oh, if, I busted, I busted, I busted. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna well, go ahead on the limb and what say a great if, showing. If Brandon and I finish first and second in the twenty twenty one WSOP main event, twenty twenty two you could you could fucking kiss CCG goodbye. Like we're gonna be like on an eight month hiatus, just be gone. <laughs> That's true. We're gone, right? We're gonna be calling out. all the time, like, bro, what happened? Like you guys are gone. I'd be like, I'm a millionaire now, I'm gone. It'd be great. Are you living on an island somewhere, helicoptering to Bridgeview? It'd be sweet. <sighs> it would be sweet. All right, let's put that out in the universe. You're here to hear first, folks. First and second in the WSOP main event, we will be the number one podcast of all time. Bigger than that is true. We bigger would than be anything. The number one podcast of all time. That would be gross. And I would totally. We would have so many shenanigans. It would be great. Make for great television. Let's throw, just hope. Let's just fil- hope somebody makes a day three. Yeah, like they're gonna be like money maker. <laughs> who? How about? Sh- it's just Commander and Collins. It'll be great. All right, here we go. Uh, that's right. the end of Brando's story, part one. Finito from Finito. Brando. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty fucking sweet. Um, yeah. That's a pretty sweet run. Uh, I'm impressed because you also did over multiple games. And 
that's pretty awesome. And you only did the one roulette spin, bink to 27, and then just walk to the slot machine? Yep. That's gross. That's pretty good. All right, my story begins in a beautiful city called Houston, Texas. Uh, I went to the Texas Card House to check out another club. I like to go to the different clubs in Texas. Uh, besides Paramount, I pay predominantly at Paramount. Uh, and I do convince those uh, those Paramount peeps, big shout out to my Paramount peeps, I do convince them a lot to play some more PLO than normal. The whole time I'm there, we're playing like one, two, no limit. And then it's like, let's do one hand of PLO. Cool. Let's do two hands of PLO. Let's do round by round. Fuck it. Let's just play all PLO. I like convince them slowly, like a drunken prom date, to just keep going all the way to PLO, and it's fantastic. And it's great. But anyways, I decided to take some time, and I went with another employee from Paramount to go to the Texas Card House. She was playing in the tournament. She did really well. She ended up getting like third place in their like 15K, uh, $120 deep stack. Which is a pretty nice, gross good showing. Yeah, pretty gross uh tournament in general. It's basically like the regular I think you get like fifty K starting chips, so you do get more chips. Uh but it's like fifteen minute levels. They're very deep levels, but they're fifteen minutes. So it's basically like the regular deep stack tournaments that we play. Um but it's great. So anyways, little plug for Texas Card House since I did kind of make a complete shit show showing in their poker room. <laughs> <laughs> got to give them. I got to give some props. Give them a little credit, right? Because I bat. did fully f- derail this poker room. I just derailed them. So here's Ken. You know, squeaky Ken from Chicago, having fun in my cardigan, hanging out, getting made fun of for hair and stuff. I get made fun of everywhere. No parts of the country are different. I'm. I just the hair gets made to be fun honest, of everywhere. You really don't look like you're from Texas. I'm no, I don't look like I'm from like Texas. Yeah, which is fine. I could talk to talk, though. So I sit down. I'm like, I want to play uh, PLO. They play 1-2 PLO, similar to the horseshoe. Uh, yep. it, it always confuses me with the non-complete to 5. I like the 1-2-5 PLO game the best, where it's like the blinds are dollar $2, but the opening bet is 5 bucks. It just, I don't know, it obviously plays bigger. It rounds everything up. It needs everything makes, up. It makes my math a lot easier. And I so many times were just throwing in red, throw in red birds thinking, well, and then the opens are different. Anyways, so God bless them. They had a PLO main game and two feeder tables, and a seat had just opened up. Now, it's like Friday night at like 8, 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. Like Basically I mean, prime time. Prime time, Friday night, right? Like that's like after after work hours, like the, the room is packed. They've got probably 15 tables, and I would say uh, almost every table is going. Uh, I was yeah. all the way in the back corner in this PLO game. Um, that was like the second feeder table and lots of, and obviously people are kind of moving all, all the time. So you never really get a, like a sense of like who's at the table and what's going on. It's just a constant influx of players. So I'm playing around there and I was fine. I bought in for, I don't think there's a, t- a table max or it might be, I bought it for a thousand, I think. Uh, good old Texas PLO. Yeah, it was a thousand. I think I bought it for a thousand. I might've bought it for 2000, but I don't remember. I think it was a thousand. Um, I had brought five with me to play. That was my goal. I was planning on playing a little bit bigger stakes. I was trying to get a 5-10 game going, but that didn't pan out. But the game, the action was so good in 1-2 that it, it, I didn't want to leave at that point. That I, We'll get to right. that. So we're playing the, the feeder game, and I'm having a blast, and people are having fun. It's a really good PLO game because it's exciting. There's action. People are playing all the way down. Um you know, there's a lot of banter, but it's fun and friendly banter. There's no mean banter, right? Like, I don't feel like I'm being, like, yelled at, but I'm having You're, fun. Yeah, not malicious. Yeah, it's, it's still, like, Everybody's having a, a very friendly, fun game, but tons of action. So I think I get, like, my 1000 bucks up to, like, I don't know, 18 almost 2000 Then I get bumped up to the next game, and everybody's sad because action, Ken is leaving, because I'm just driving the action, uh, having a blast. Get to the second PLO game, uh, the second, or the, the actual feeder game. And that one was great. Now the, the the dynamic here is is that nobody wants to leave the the feeder table to go to the main game because the main game has been running since whatever the morning, and it's super nitty. And there's a lot of money on the table, but it's a lot of the nitty players. Like there's not a ton of action. It's like open to ten, muck 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 muck. And I'm like, how in the proper hell are we playing this game? And you're opening the ten dollars, and everybody's folding. 
what a miserable fucking right. game. Especially when we got this other table behind us. Where I am, I am putting off. on a show like there is no tomorrow. Brandon knows the Ken show when I'm winning and I'm having fun, and it's great. It's a great show. I am the greatest show. He morphs showman. into a different human. I am a, I am a fully, I am an, ent- I entertain the fish, even though I am a fish. But sometimes at that point I become a whale because I have money in front of me. So I'm just I'm an awesome fun whale, and everybody wants my money, but I'm willing to gamble for it. It's great. So, anyways, we're playing. I'm up and down. I'm at like I think I came over there with like 1,800. I went a couple of pots early. I'm up to like 25, maybe three. Long story short, uh, I, I get it back down to like 1,800, and this is the start of the the shit show. Player to my, I mean, I think I, I I raised to like fifteen or opened to like fifteen because uh, we were straddling. So I opened to fifteen. There's a, a raise, a re raise, another raise, another raise. I call. This guy goes all in. So it's like this five way multi pot. I close the action, and I've literally got like five, no seven, eight, nine, nine double suited. Wasn't crazy about the nines. I wish I'd had a, a like a four card run there, but I was. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like pretty that. sure. Like, I'm not sharing cards with anybody. Like, these guys got to have big cards. Like, I got to hope one of my flush draws good. I'm pretty sure if I hit a nine, I'll be good. Um, I'm really looking for middle straight cards. Uh, I'm really looking for like baby cards, right? And it was like eighteen hundred dollars for me to call, which is basically I think almost everything I had left. And I was just like, I'm like, him and Ha, and I'm like, do I want to gamble? Like, this is a sick, this is a huge pot. I mean, this is like an eight or $9,000 pot because there's like four-way action here. And I'm the last guy to call. And basically, everybody's all in at this point. So like, whatever, like the amount of money afterwards is pretty insignificant. And yeah. um, I him and Ha, I him and Ha, and the guys, uh, you know, everybody, the other two guys are all in. The other guy I'm playing against who was right behind me was the only one with a little bit of money left over. Um, and uh, we kind of are talking and I was like, I really want to gamble here. And he's like, well, what do you mean you want to gamble? I was like, I have dog shit hand, but like, I just want to get in on this pot. And I feel like right. it's there's just too much there's money. Just out so there much money fold. in there. I turn into like Scrooge McDuck and I want to jump into this pile of gold and swim around. <laughs> I don't even care if it's not mine. I just want to swim around in the gold. Like you I don't want to be a part of it. I just want to be, be a part, part of it. it. And everybody's like, you're not going to call me and quit fucking Hollywood. And I'm like, I'm not. And I'm like, you know what? Fine. Fuck it. I call. Whatever. I got nothing. And of course, uh, sure enough, I think I flopped clubs, which is one of the ones I had, which turns out that they were good. Because at this point, it's friendly Texas. So like everybody's kind of saying what they have. Um, yeah. And a lot of people are sh- flashing cards. Every- you know, nobody's actually tabled their hand. I did because I didn't care. Um, everybody's looking around. They're like, you called $2,000 with that crap hand? I was like, yeah, whatever. I just I want to get it on the action. You know, um, needless to say, I... I think I flopped a flush, turned the other flush with a gutter ball and bricked out. And some guy won with like two pair on this ginormo pot. But that was the start of this wild and crazy ride where people were just going bananas. Fast forward, I get another thousand. I think I bought him for two thousand at that point because there was so much money in the table. I wanted to get more. And you, so that pot kind of opened the floodgates. That and one, the game changed. The game was super pot. juicy and I tipped it Titanic style into. Now it's a it's just full wild. Full blown oblivion. It's full nuts. blown degenerate wildness is going on at this point. And I have infected everybody at the table with my degeneracy. <laughs> and I fucking love every second of it. I am so excited. I it's just it's great. Because it's not I mean, at that point, you you're not playing to win or lose. It's just it's the the action. I I it, the action was palpable. People are coming over from the other tables to watch, and they're like, "This dipshit from Chicago just went all in for two thousand dollars with like this crap hand just to get in it." Da, 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 da. I mean, it was great. So there's some buzz going around. We're having fun. Everything's exciting. I get in for my two thousand. I lose a couple pots. I dwindle down. Top up. Top up. I'm in for all five thousand. Now my mood, and Brandon knows this exactly. This is like two hours later. My mood has gone from. Uh, super fun, Ken, to now I'm not really talking much because I'm losing and now I'm kind of in the mode where I'm like, I'm down and I'm I'm pissed about it and I should have just fucking left when I was up after the first game, blah, 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 blah. It's the other end of bipolar, It's the other end of bipolar, Ken. It's the downside of bipolar, You don't really want to be around. You don't really want to And it was great because there was this guy, Shane, 
Um, and he was following me from the first game. When are you gonna get? Really and he didn't want to leave. And he was trying to convince the floor guy to not let him go to the main game. And he was like five people ahead of me. And I was like, Shane, just get over it. I'm screaming from our table. This is right after the big hand happened. So Shane is chomping at the bit. He's got like twelve thousand in front of him. He's chomping at the bit to get my money because he knows that I'm gonna gamble with him. And when I finally get to the final table before I lost most of my money, we're, we're he's like, Can you down to like uh blind pot pot to start? And I was like, Yep. So he's first to act. Pot comes to me. Pot. Now it's like three hundred dollars five. We get a couple guys in there. Him and I are just. It's great. We're having a blast. But I donked off all of my money. Now I'm down to like seven hundred and fifty dollars. It's three o'clock and eh, two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I, I have to go home. I'm tired. I need to go home. I'm I'm gonna lose my five k. Like I need to go home. But I'm like at this point, I'm down like forty three hundred bucks. Like what's the difference yeah, yeah, between forty nice three and five? Correct. I mean, I, yeah. I know the answer is 700. Might as well get it in. So I say to the table, the button has just passed me, like maybe one or two hands passed. And I just took a beat that I thought I was going to get like a triple up and get like half of my money back and kind of save this trip. Um, and I didn't. I got totally rivered on like a two outer and I was super fucking pissed about it. So now I'm full blown depressed, Ken. <clears throat> so I just, you know, I need to change my mood. I say to the table, mostly to Shane. I was like, all right, guys, here's the plan. I'm going to bet pot every way, every hand until I'm out or the button gets back to me. That's my plan. You guys can ask me to stop it. I, I literally am giving this speech to the table. This is the table <laughs> captain, Ken speaking. Hi, this is your captain speaking. This is what's going to happen now. I'm going to go all in blind every single hand. I'm going to bet pot every street without looking. I'm never going to look at my cards. You could choose to play along in this shenanigans or you could sit out. But we're going to do this for the next seven hands. Regardless. Or until I'm out of money. And then I'm going home. And fully, I'm expecting to just... Dump, well, yeah, you just lose all your dump money and, and leave like and go, to and, and I'm I'm leaving my mark at Texas Card House as just this wild guy who the, came in and, yeah, and just crazy cat just rocked the, the rocked the table. I completely tilted the table, so I don't really remember all of the hands, but I remember the first hand. It's like four ways in, which is awesome because it's a seven. I have seven hundred dollars in front of me, so I mean four ways in. You're talking about twenty hundred dollar pot right away, right? Mm-hmm. I think I'm going against me and two other players and. I, I'm not looking, and everybody's like, "Did you really not look? Did you really not look?" I'm like, "No, I didn't look." We basically got it all in preflop, like, uh, or you know, I, I yeah, didn't you're look. Just, you're, I have you're no just idea. Clicking the, the full pop button every time it's. I'm here. flipping at this point. This is flip, Ken, and I am the king of flips. Which you'll find out why in a minute here. I'm the king of flips. I'm just, I'm flipping. It's whatever. So of course, sure enough, two pair, baby straight. Uh, the guy's got like the sucker end of the straight. So I literally need jack ten in order to win this pot, or like tie the other guy which would have been fine too so i flip over the first card it's a 10 flip over the second card and uh, whatever third card whatever it is i'm down to i need to pull a i think just a jack i need a jack to win the pot for the nuts and what do you know like in the movie maverick and mel gibson which is probably my third favorite poker movie i just flip it over and bam it's the jack of spades I just went a twenty twenty eight hundred dollar pot first hand, no problem. Now most people at that point, after I'm I'm raking in this big pot, everybody can't believe it. This asshole just went all in blind and blind, blah blah blah. But they're all mad at me. I'm scooping in my pot, start scrabbling it up, and uh, they assume that the show's over. Right? Nobody's dumb enough to do it again. Right, Brandon? Would anybody be dumb enough to do it again? I mean, no. You just four x stuff. I mean, who? Now you're just giving away money. It's a lot of money now. It's not just seven hundred. Right. Now it's a lot of money. But in my mind, I am not doing typical. I'm gambling. Ken thinks this is only seven hundred bucks. It's already gone in my mind. This money's gone. I'm just holding on to it. It's not mine. There's an open. Gets back bit. to me. I have not looked at my cards. Pot. And everybody is shocked that I did it again. It hits the flop. There's a couple of callers. Gets to me. What do I say? pot Pot. one caller gets back to me on the turn i think we're almost all the way in but not quite pot and everybody is like jaws on the floor cannot believe this jackass not is like they're going crazy i bet pot every street all the way down i'm not gonna do anything else like i'm not gonna look he shows like i've got you know two pair i roll over whatever my cards are blind style i'm just flipping over one at a time and everybody's peeking and i'm doing the squeeze plays you know i'm looking at him i'm putting on the show I I had flopped a set of fives, so I win that pot. So now I'm up to like 5K. I'll fast forward this a little bit. 
I and I did this every single hand. Now sometimes I, I just won outright. Nobody played against me. Other times, other yeah. times, um, we we chopped a couple pots. Another time there was like a I I lost the main pot but won the side pot because whatever. And like so many times, I'm down to my last card and it was nuts. And this this Shane guy was in with me the whole way. So we get all the way down. I think now I, I ended up winning seven hands in a row, and. At least profiting. You maybe not winning the main, but you won the side. I won money and er- I I brought back chips to my stack every time. So I ran my seven hundred up into like eight thousand, something mm-hmm. like that, seven thousand. Um so you're was, up now. Oh yeah, I'm up five. now. And finally now you're up. It's my button. And I said I would play into my button got bad. I'm finally back in the button. And I said to everybody, now again at this point, after like five or six hands of this of me going People all in blind. actual piss now it, it went from funny to oh my god this is awesome to fuck this guy i don't want to see this anymore to i'm i'm now i'm kind of worried about getting punched or people being mad at me <laughs> I, i'm serious it, the vibe changed at the table it went from we love this action to oh my god this is the most amazing poker show we've ever seen to and again there's like 20 people all right all the other games have stopped playing, games. right? They're just coming over to watch this shenanigans. And this one girl who was there was like, um, she said, what did she call it? Uh, she said, I can't remember the word. And I was like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm it was like the, it was such a negative like comment. And it was true. She's like, you're really putting on a show here. I was like, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, uh, I already said I would do it. So I'm not going to go back on my word because I'm a man of my word, but I feel bad because now the vibe is like pissed at me. So I finally right. said to the table, guys, I'll you're leave now down the whole room. I'll leave now. I'm a, I'm a floor nightmare. I mean, cause like I'm just distracting every, no other games are playing. They're yeah. pissed. Long story or shorter. Um, we get to, you know, well, I've got, you know, almost 7,000 in front of me and or close to 7,000. And um, sure enough, um, we get to the end. It's my button. And I said to Shane, I was like, all right, guys, what do you want to do? I mean, he had like 14,000 when I came to the table. And now we're basically even like yeah. I've got seven. He's got seven. I had won a lot of money from him doing these these basically flips um, with a couple other people thrown in there. And I just put a bad beat on him for hand before. Long story shorter, we get to the last hand. I say to the table, like, I'll leave. If you guys want me to leave, just say the word and I'll stop. But you're going to have to stop this train. I'm not going to do it on my own. I promised I would do it from now to the end. I don't care if I lose all of it. If somebody wants to flip me for it, I will. But you're going to have to stop me. I'm not going to stop on my own. Shane's like, nah, fuck it. Let's do it one more hand. I was like, okie dokie. So he's on the button. Everybody folds to Shane. Shane bets pot. I bet pot. He bets pot. I bet pot. He bets pot. We're all in. He looked at his hand, obviously. And I said, Shane, did you look at your hand? He goes, of course he looked at my hand. I was like, great. Uh, he claims he's got kings, double suited. Flop comes out. Eight. Eight. Jack turns a six. River's a deuce. That's it. He's got, he goes, I got kinks. I swear to Christ, this is not a lie. I have not looked at my hands. This is a $14,000 pot, right? And Shane's the only guy at the table with more money than me, uh, you know, on the table. He's got kinks. Everybody's looking at his cards because he's basically showing kinks. And yep. um, no no flush, no straight. F- first card I flip over, what do you think it is? Eight. It's an eight. First card. I one card scoop him. First card's an eight. The the room mildly deflated. Um it was it was kind of scary. It was it was fun. Uh but at this point now I'm like I'm a little nervous about it. And I, like, I, oh God. I now I kind of feel bad. Like I've kind of ruined this game. I, I feel like as a person who's in charge of promoting um you know, doing marketing for poker events and poker games and things. I, like, I, I have turned into my own worst. You would nightmare. hate you at CCG. I would hate me yeah. at CCG or at Paramount. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm mortified at this point. I've let it go too far, but I can't stop because it's already gone by. But I feel bad, so I literally say, Shane, do you want to run it twice? 
And of course, uh, the dealer's like, sir, you didn't elect to run it twice. And I was like, I can do whatever. And she's like, yeah, he can do whatever he wants. I was like, run it twice. I'm hoping that we run it again, a second board. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking we're running a second board. And I really just want to chop this pot, get my seven. 8,000, 7,800 back or 7,500 back, whatever it was, 7,200. Yeah, just gonna, I just want my 7,500. I'm going to leave at this point. Like, I'm going to just, I'm going to get out of Dodge now. I've robbed the bank. I need to get out and not hang around and gloat about it. Like, I need to leave. And he's, yeah, of course we're doing it. Well, then the dealer doesn't know what to do. And he's like, uh, the floor comes over and the floor's like, did you say you were going to run it twice? And I jump in and I go, yes, which was a lie. We didn't say we were going to run it twice. We just, we were running it. We were just running it out, right? I was yeah. like, no, 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 we, we intended to run it twice. And she's like, yeah, of course we do. And I was like, yeah, 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 we were running it twice. Floor's like, no, if you didn't say it beforehand, like, I can't go back now. We're not just going to pick out two cards. Now, the dealer's already dropped the deck, but it's clean. Like, we know where it is. She didn't muck anything. Um, so it's fine. They're arguing a little bit about it. And now he's really getting heated about it because he wants this free roll. It won't happen. It ends up, This is like the nightmare of the story. He ends up, like, being super pissed about it. The dealer's like, fine, runs it twice. But they only run a turn in a river. I expected a full board um, yeah. because that's what we do in in Chicago. We do yeah. like running it twice from means you you run two full boards. Well, down there, if you start from free flop. You run two full boards. Down there, they, they do don't they like don't ever do flop, that. Two turns, right? Two they rivers. they always do one flop, two turns, or you know, turn river, turn river, and that's running it twice. You get two turns and two rivers, not two full yeah. boards. Obviously, he still can't beat me on the second time we run it. Well, at this point, I can't ask to say run it three times. Um, he gets mad, crumples up his cards, gets kicked out, and uh, I leave sheepishly, kind of mildly embarrassed of my shenanigans um, from super fun to not so much fun anymore. But uh, I did run that 700 up into like 15K, 14 and change. Yeah, I am about to say, it's uh, it seems depressing from everybody else, but yeah. it still seems and really, I basically really fun did win. for you. I did win seven hands in a row plus a bomb pot because they did have a dealer switch in between there. When they do the dealer switches in Texas, there's always a bomb pot. The uh, button freezes too, so you get an extra hand. The button freezes. Yeah, exactly. So that was my run good story with like a mild, you need to be careful this because I feel like I'm not welcome back in Texas. But then I heard later from people when I came back down to Paramount like a couple weeks later, um, they were calling me Scoops when Scoops coming back to to Texas Card House because they wanted to get some action again, and I was like, well, "Who the hell is Scoops? What are you talking about?" And uh, that that was what they were calling me, the infamous. They called you Scoops. Scoops. I like to be known as the King of Flips, but apparently, uh, in in some circles in Texas, I am known as just Scoops. But that's my run good story. I don't know if it's as good as yours because yours has a, a happy good ending. One, though. It is. I felt bad about it. And it's nothing worse in poker than winning and then feeling bad about it. Like, I felt bad. Now, I mean, granted, you know, I just look at it every single time you lose, you're going to walk out of there and have a smile on your face and everybody else is going to be happy. So, like, the one time you destroy everybody, you know, you, you can't take it too personally. And I, mean, I did. And I was a little nervous just about like, it. But I'm a good guy. Try at heart. to give them free money. Yeah, I'm not a cold-hearted gambler. I just like to gamble. I just want to have some fun. Sorry, sometimes I'm going to win. Like, I'm the guy who occasionally will take the points against the Globetrotters. Like, maybe <laughs> maybe they'll maybe the Washington, the Generals have, they've, they're due. They're due. They're due. They're due. It's a stupid bet. I don't really have any chance to win, but it's fun. I had a really good time losing that money. In this case, I was trying to have a good time and lose my money. As it turned out, I went full blown Superman and just just knocked out a whole table. It was great. It's only the second time in the history of Ken that I've I've cleaned out an entire table. It's just six. You did it in seven hands. Seven. Too. Yeah, well, all dark. Technically eight. All dark. Eight. Yeah. There's no skill involved here. Yours no. is skill based. Minus the roulette, minus the the slot machine, but it was great. Uh, anyways, that's enough shenanigans from Brandon and I today. Um, thanks for listening. Pretty sweet story, though. Yeah, I mean, not bad. To win eight hands, in eight the hands dark, in a row. I mean, in it's a row. really hard to win one hand. Eight in, in a dark row. And PLO. Yeah. Um, thanks for listening. I remember you calling me at like three a.m. Yep. or at four a.m. Four a.m. Yep. And I'm like playing Fortnite with some ccg dealers and you're just in the background i'm like why are you calling me i was like i look and saw the caller id i'm like well this is really good or really bad right. and i didn't process 
that you were in Texas. Again, it's it's a random Why phone call. My boss calling me yeah, at four in the morning on a Friday night. And you were just all excited. You're like, you're not going to believe it. Every time I just had to show a Jack Ten, and I showed Jack Ten. Yep. And then there was another time where the guy had the Jack High flush, and then my first card just the Ace of Hearts. Yep. And then the last card just the Three of Hearts. Yep. And I had to not flush. And I mean, you just sounded so excited. I mean, now probably looking back on it, you're mildly embarrassed. I am. Slash feel a little bad for the situation but i'll tell you right now in the moment you were a happy camper i was and <laughs> it's one of those things where it's $15 like is a lot of money well and, and the other th- and i tipped like crazy so that's yeah. the other reason i think they loved it so like i'm tipping i started out green birds yeah. and at the, end, at the last fight. five i was throwing black chips and then I had like fifteen four or whatever it was, or fourteen eight. Or, I don't remember the exact number because I ended up cashing out for fourteen thousand. I don't remember what I left the table with because I was literally like just throwing stuff into the crowd. Like here's a hundred for you. Here's a hundred for you. <laughs> I was trying to buy back the people's um, faith in Ken because they didn't want to get beat up in the parking lot. So I was just tossing out hundred dollar tokens. Just yeah, here you go. Just, here you go. Yeah. And I think I had like fourteen two to cash out, and then I she gave me fourteen, and then I tipped her the two, and she was like, "Oh no, sir, it's fourteen two. And I was like, "No, I, I know this, this is for you." And she's like, "Oh, oh my god!" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you know, for the cage, you know, thank you." Uh, it was great. It was super fun. I did have a uh, security escort me out because I was mildly nervous about getting I, I beat would up. Too. I would too. But it was cool. It was a great. It was a great time. I really appreciated Texas Card House. Um, you won't get me to say, I don't know, I mean, talk about a competitor on our podcast that's sponsored by a club in Texas, um, but they did an awesome job. We had a great, it was a ton of action. It was a super fun space. I really, really enjoyed it. Granted, I did win a bunch, so that also helps, but uh, full five-star review from Ken for that that poker club. Um, so fun fact, I had to use 14 racks to rack up my chances. Oh, my Lord. 14 i had to carry it all in the main cage nice see again these are problems that most poker players want to have we're going to end on brandon's 14 racks so there's two records that you need to break uh overlay fans one cash out with 14 racks i don't care if they're dollars just try to try to carry 14 racks to the cage and cash out after cash game session two try to win more than eight hands in a row three Tip off a bunch of money. Oh, then then take your tip off money and either chuck it to the crowd because you need to buy back their appreciation so that you're not murdered by a mob rule, um, or take that take money and take it to yes. the pits and see if you can make something happen. That's a pretty tough uh, act to follow, but I think it's quite fun. Um, thank you for listening. Follow us on Twitter at the Overlay Pod. We are almost at twenty thousand downloads, which is wild to think about. This has been a fun two years. We had almost a. Um, GPT, what was the award we almost got? Global Poker uh, Awards. GPI, yeah, or yeah. Brandon Global had a sick award. run last year. We just put it out in the world that Brandon and I are going to finish one and two in the main event. Other than that, thank you for listening. Brandon, lead us out. Farewell, all. We'll see you in a couple weeks. See you in a couple weeks. Bye, everybody.